filming. Good morning. This is our August 23rd Sunday School lesson. St. George United Methodist Church members and friends. It's from the Adult Bible Studies. And it is in the toward the end of Unit 3. A New Lay of Life is the title of the unit. And the title of our lesson today is Great Faith. Isn't that a good title? And it comes from a story of an interaction of Jesus with a woman and the disciples in the book of Matthew, chapter 15. So if you'll get your Bibles ready, we'll read it together in just a minute. I hope you're all doing well this hot August month, and I hope to see you all soon in person, in the flesh, and thank you for tuning in for Sunday School Lessons with our church. This month's lessons ask the questions, what is a neighbor? The whole summer has been on community, but this one is what is a neighbor and what does it mean to be a neighbor? So keep that in mind. We are studying Jesus' interactions and stories with Samaritans, Gentiles, women, outcasts, the unfit, the unloved. And the bottom line that we want to pull from these is that Jesus loves and changes things and lives. This passage that we're going to read today takes place near the Phoenician towns of Tyre and Sidon on the northwest coast above Israel. And now it is the region that is now Lebanon. Jesus has recently, in a few verses of chapter 15, had a confrontation with the Pharisees. And they've been discussing purity and the laws of purity. So he has taken his disciples away from the Pharisees and they've gone northwest to near the ocean. So as we read the scripture together, I want you to notice the conversations and the comments from Jesus, the disciples, and this woman. Okay. From there, Jesus went to the regions of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from those territories came out and shouted, Show me mercy, son of David. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession but he didn't respond to her at all. His disciples came and urged him, send her away. She keeps shouting at us. Jesus replied, I've been sent only to the lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. He replied, it is not good to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off their master's tables. Jesus answered, woman, you have great faith. It will be just as you wish. And right then, her daughter was healed. That ends the scripture lesson. Now, this story is also in the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 7, 6 verses 24 through 30. And I'm also going to refer to something from the message translation um, a little later in the lesson. This lesson revolves around a woman, and she was an outsider to Jesus and his disciples, and in fact to Jews in general. Like all the major characters in the events we've studied in this unit in August, she would be considered an RCO. And that's one of the author's words for repugnant cultural other to the Jews. We realize that's not something that's limited to that society back then. We still have repugnant cultural others in our world, outside our culture, our community, our circle of friends, outside our family. Who are our RCOs? This woman is a Canaanite. And those were the people that worshiped pagans. But she has come seeking this Jesus she has heard about and asking for his help. 
This lesson will push us to be more open-minded, honest, and seek Jesus' words and intent to heal everyone and heal widely. This passage might be the most difficult of text because of Jesus' first reactions and his words. He doesn't speak to her at first. The message says in verse 23, Jesus ignored her. Is this a test? Is he testing her? Is he testing the disciples? Is he testing us, the believers? His words to her are puzzling for sure, too. The woman is shouting. Now, this could be translated as pleading, crying, desperate for attention, desperate for mercy. She knows that this Jesus is known as a healer. And she feels that he alone can heal her daughter. She even falls down in worship. And that is a sincere expression of faith. And it's to this Jesus. Now Jesus ignores her first. But the disciples have a rebuttal. They say, send her away. She's yelling after us. In the message... It says, the disciples came and complained. Now she's bothering us. Would you please take care of her? Us, her? She's driving us crazy. Sound familiar? Evidently, if this was a test from Jesus to them, they failed. Because they did not provide a listening ear to a person in pain, a person pleading, a person asking for mercy. They didn't recognize this woman's need. Now, there are eight exchanges of conversations in this passage. So, I wonder, what did the disciples feel at the end of this passage after they heard Jesus' replies to her and her daughter was pronounced healed? In the message, he says... Um, your faith is something else. In verse 24, Jesus speaks of saving the lost sheep of Israel. In verse 24 in the message, it says, I've got my hands full dealing with the lost sheep of Israel. Some Bible scholars see this act as an initial part of God's plan of redemption to the world. So this is Jesus' beginning to... Um, witness and, and expect witness to the world, not just the lost sheep. This underlies the rights, though, that they are still the covenant believers who he is relating to. However, only after Jesus' resurrection did God grant the Gentiles and they became branches of God's family and the children of Abraham. But this woman, even though she's an outsider, she is undeterred. So she kneels and she pleads for help. So Jesus says, she pleads the second time, and he says, It is not good to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. This rebuttal might have caused many seekers to give up. It was an insult possibly an ethnic slur, possibly a reason to leave me alone. But this woman's <coughs> need and her desperation override this, and she is determined, and she is persistent. The children's bread, he says, refers to the rights of those who had the legal and the ancestry heritage to the Jewish covenant. Jesus' reference to dogs has been a long source of scholarly debate. Is this the vernacular of the day? Is it truly an ethnic slur, Jesus says? Does it represent the unclean, the unwanted, the unfed? Dogs were considered unworthy and outsiders. Again, the woman comes back with a remark and says, claims, even the dogs get the crumbs. 
And in the message, she says, you're right, Master, but beggar dogs do get scraps from the Master's table. She claims these dogs get the crumbs and it would be enough. She's wanting only a piece of his blessing, of his mercy, of his healing. She's appealing to Jesus' goodness and the power. Don't we ask for too much? We realize maybe just a crumb of blessing would be healing. And it comes from God and it comes from Jesus' love. Her persistent faith required Jesus' response. And this is where her prayer is answered. Her daughter is healed. How many of us can say we have been as persistent as this woman in our prayers and our pleas? Do we value crumbs? Another point, isn't it wonderful that God's love is available in many ways, in many forms, in many blessings to all people? The lesson book asks us, what are the things that hinder you or us in our quest for Jesus' attention, his love, his help, his blessing? Now, we don't know what else is said after this except Jesus' final words, his powerful words to her. Woman, you have great faith. It will be just as you wish. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, Jesus tells her, go home because the demonic spirit has left her daughter. Now, his positive comment to her about her faith is very rare. Jesus' comments to other people about their faith in the book of Matthew only occurs four other times earlier. One in chapter 8, he addresses a Gentile Roman centurion. The second in chapter 9, he talks to the friends of the paralyzed man. For their faith. He expresses um, the faith of an unclean woman that is healed from bleeding over 12 years in chapter 9. And once again in chapter 9, he talks about the faith of two blind men. So this fifth reference to this woman, he says, is great faith. And he recognizes that it doesn't require a legal or religious, or an ancestry protocol. It doesn't require training, or education, or status, or riches, or family. It means the surety of heart that grace only comes from Jesus. And this woman, an RCO, a repugnant cultural other, has that persistent faith. Do we? Our lesson book concludes this week's message with some wonderful comments. So I'm going to use them for our conclusion. If we put our faith and trust in God, we reap the blessings and benefits we find only in a relationship with God. The success of this Canaanite woman goes along with all the other outcasts in this gospel as well as the heroes and the heroines of the faith in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Through uncompromising and unrelenting faith in God, these persons and pioneers conquered kingdoms, brought about justice, realized promises, shut the mouths of lions, put out raging fires, escaped from the edge of the sword, were healed like this woman, and found strength in weaknesses. These saints looked beyond their circumstances, and they saw faith's promise to those who will not give up. God still responds to our faith. 
Faith is culture and colorblind and status blind. God listens to all our cries. So we need to get serious in our prayers and our beliefs. Trust God when it's hard to trust. Plead. And remember that God cares enough to stop and commune with you as Jesus did with that woman. The Lord will speak to your deepest need. Our faith in God assures us that in spite of how things might appear, our future is always hopeful when we stand on heaven's eternal promises. Daily persistence, daily prayers, unrelenting conviction, undying gratitude that equals God's blessings every day ask yourself what can we do you do I do to increase our faith in God today let us pray a short prayer dear Lord Sometimes we forget that we were once outsiders in your kingdom. Help us to remember all those who come to you and help us to be persistent in our prayers and worship of you and help us to realize what, mean, what it means to be a good neighbor. As we say in closing together, Amen.